Hello and welcome to Read with Pride, a podcast focused on LGBTQIA plus literature brought to you by the Ocean County Library's Ocean Pride Committee. Hello, today we are going to chat about Gender Queer, the graphic memoir by Maya Kobabe. In this book, Maya speaks about air journey as a non-binary individual, gender and sexuality. This book has won several awards and it is also known for being the most banned book in the country. My name is Diane, pronouns she, her. I work at the Toms River Branch and I'm a member of the Ocean Pride Committee. My name is Amy, pronouns are also she, her. I work at the Lakewood Branch and I am a member of the Ocean Pride Committee as well. My name is Courtney, pronouns she, they. I also work at the Lakewood Branch and I am also a member of the Ocean Pride Committee. Okay, so the first question is, what is your overall impression of the book? Oh, I go first. Yeah, you go first. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> no, that's okay. Short, sweet answer. I really enjoyed it, and I'm glad that I finally got the chance to read it because it's been on my list for forever, and I just didn't get to it. I'm also glad that I finally got the chance to read it. I found this to be a really profound and emotionally stirring memoir and a really incredible reminder that no one is alone even when they think that they might be. Everyone's kind of going through their own journeys and it's nice to see that reflected here. So yeah, I also was happy to finally read it. I think probably the last few years I've been hearing of the book so much, being that it was banned so often. Mm -hmm. I think it was a great read and a well-needed resource for people that um, are curious or about going through different things or similar things in their life. Next question is, did you find any similarities between you and the author? I found so many. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> we're both librarians or, you know, library worker adjacent. Uh, we're both cartoonists. We were both theater kids. And we're both exploring our gender expression and the way that we would like the world to see us in a variety of ways. I saw similarities between myself and the author just in that just questioning things. Maybe not as many as you, but I felt like just struggles with life in general is where I found some similarities. On that note, my answer kind of combines both of your answers a little bit. (laughs) Because you reminded me, Courtney, in your answer that yes, I was also kind of a theater kid and I also work at the library, obviously. Mm -hmm. But it's similar to your answer. Like I recently, I never had any moments like that with my gender or pronouns, but I recently, like about a year ago, realized like, oh, I'm bisexual. So Mm -hmm. that kind of let me relate a little bit to the book. I had already sort of been questioning before I read this book, and this book had sort of been recommended to me on that basis. And reading it and seeing this perspective became a nice supplement in that journey. Yeah. Isn't that, that's great what books can do. Like I feel like when I've been recently wondering about my own sexuality Mm -hmm. and somebody recommended some books to me also, and it's like, oh, wait a minute. And then I'm like, oh, this is why they recommended it, I think, you know. Yeah. Yeah, interesting. I love that. What was your favorite part of the book? What was your least favorite part? Okay, so I'm first gonna say my least favorite part because as I read it, I was like, oh, I do not enjoy this part as much, but it was when it was very informative, um, when they were talking, there's a section closer to the end when they're talking about um, another author. I think the author wrote Touching a Nerve. So it was very like research-based. Yes. So wasn't that, I mean, I feel like it's good and it's resourceful, but I felt like it sort of took away from the story for me. I wanted to know their story. So that was my least favorite part. Uh, My favorite part was the section where they spoke about the Spivik pronouns. Is that, am I saying that right? Spivik? I'm not sure how to pronounce that. I have been pronouncing it, uh, I think it's it's either Spivik or Spivek. Oh, okay. I think Spivik is probably... (laughs) <laughs> the best we'll go with for that. Yeah. Now. yeah. yeah. <laughs> so that was my favorite part because it was like an enlightening moment for the mm-hmm. the author and as a reader I found it very like, oh, interesting. Yeah. I think that also was kind of my favorite part or part of it. Like I just wrote when things started like clicking into place for Maya more. So like figuring out her pronouns and how they identified and stuff. That was my favorite part. I think I blanked out your least favorite part, Diane, because as soon as you said that, I was like, oh my god, I skimmed through that part so fast. But I also wrote just like Maya dealing with people's confusion and refusal to try the pronouns. Like, Mm -hmm. I wasn't, I obviously, I don't know, that part's obviously like upsetting. 
Yeah. Mm -hmm. My favorite part was anytime Maya was either talking about the things that E loves or made E feel passionate and happy and getting a peek into those interests, but also when Maya talks and shows about Air Desire to be more non-feminine, but not 100% male, that really spoke to me very personally. Also, just seeing the representation of art school, that's a very big <laughs> comfort for me. I wouldn't say that this was my least favorite, as in the worst part, although I do have to kind of circle back to what you guys said, because that was maybe the most forgettable part for me. <laughs> yeah. But I totally understand why it was included, it kind of cut into the flow of the book. Mm -hmm. But for me, again, not least favorite isn't the worst, but the visceral horror when he was talking about the pap smears. Mm -hmm. Oh. Mm -hmm. That was... Yeah, that I, I understand part. why, you know, why it was included, why it was shown as uncomfortable and as viscerally upsetting as it was, but it was hard to read. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it was. But that goes to our next question, which is examine how Kobabe's art and text interact, and does the text ever become inseparable from the art? So my question is short and easy because I didn't, I don't remember noticing anything, but I know as a fellow art major <laughs> from school, Courtney's gonna, you know, uh, teach us yeah, some things <laughs> that she noticed. So for clarity here, um, I majored in animation. However, my concentration was in storyboards. Storyboards are very similar to graphic novels because a lot of what you're doing is giving information to the audience visually and making sure that they're able to sort of clearly follow the story that you're telling. You're using the medium of visual art to tell your story, to guide the audience, and to give them the information to work off of that supplements the text that's being included in it as well. This felt very standard for me in terms of how the text and the visuals interacted. It reminded me a lot of Fun Home, which I read mm. a while back, but the vibe was very similar to me, both in terms of the art style, but also how the information was presented in both books. But there were certain parts of this specifically, such as the pap smear part, I think specifically the first time that it happens when E has the visual of the pin sort of stabbing oh. through their body. Or a little bit earlier on when E is explaining the concept of exploring air gender in ways such as the plant blooming with all of the text coming off of the leaves or the shell that E feels stuck in and how it spirals around. Mm. Those are parts where the text and the visual feel one and the same. Neither is sort of outweighing each other, they complement each other, and in fact feel like if you took away either element, uh, something very big would be missing from that. Yeah, I think that um, as not a art major, <laughs> but I feel like, yes, the gyno visit, they're even like on the page, there's a part where they say horror, you know? And I was like, yeah, that was horror. Like when you read, like, the, you know, and I think it's for many people, it, you know, from, from when I think of myself, yes, it's when you go there, it's like, oh, like, why are we still using these metal things? So, you know, like, the, sure. you know, so, so yeah, it's, it's not a pleasant visit. And then another page was a little bit before that when E was setting up for their Halloween costume. Yes. Uh, and it, it's oh, like yes. joyful. Yes. And you could see like that. It's like more flowy and very like fun and relaxing, whereas the other one is more dramatic. So yeah, I definitely think they interact and you know, just well done. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I forgot about the shell until you said. Yes. Oh yeah. But yeah, that scene. That. Yes. Yeah, when you're like that you're was spiling something. around and yeah. reading it. And then also mm -hmm. the library bookshelves. They yes. Just the oh, library my gosh. bookshelves. How did we forget about that? I know. <laughs> the bookshelves. I think also when he presents the graphic of all of the books. Yes. That he's read yeah. over yes. like that ten That's year span, true. and the you can break that down in text, sure, but isn't it so much more convenient and so much more well understood if you're using a visual to show just how like what is the quantity? It's over a thousand books in the last oh, seventeen. Yes. I don't know why oh. I think seventeen, eight. No, all the way at the back, right when they were talking about the book they wrote. Was it closer to the back? With the, the graphic of the um, books? Yes. It's like a study that E did. Mm -hmm. 
page 143. Okay. Um, with the oh, statistics so the of the middle. <laughs> Reading oh, 1,786 yeah. books. Yes, 1786. Yeah. Yes, that was. I forgot about that. But yep. you're right. And mm-hmm. one thing I thought was Maya is definitely well read. Yes. And oh, yeah. there are so many like titles to reference to. Yes. Like if, if you're like, oh, what else can I read? There's so many in there that you're like, That's oh, true. let yeah. me look at this book. Makes me want to so. read more, honestly. <laughs> yes. I'm jealous. Yes. I don't know that I can possibly do that myself, but <laughs> yeah, <laughs> we'll advocate. Uh, okay, next question. What would change if Gender Queer was written entirely in prose with no pictures? What does the graphic novel give to the story? Uh, we feel like we kind of just touched on that. But go on, Courtney. I mean, I could say more. Of <laughs> That the pictures 100% serve to elevate the text in all the ways that we just discussed, all these beautiful and visceral ways. And it gives a better visual idea of things like Maya's transition and also how Maya reflects on air self-exploration and also how it reflects on air mood throughout the story. Because as we were flipping through, I also noticed when E's talking about the fan fiction that they were writing and how E was coming from this place of sadness and frustration and how the visuals of like the gloomy rain cloud over air head really elevates and shows this state of mind. And again, just taking through this emotional journey and really giving more of a platform to it, text really is one thing, but when you add a picture to it, it just brings it to a whole different place. It does. Yeah, I think the feelings, the emotions, that's, I mean, I don't think I need to say any more because no. you said it so well, but, <laughs> know, but more feeling, see. right? I yeah. definitely oh, have yeah. a feeling with the, the pictures. Yeah. Like I'll just add, which is probably funny to some people because I do read so much, but I'm recently realizing like, I don't, I have that thing where I don't necessarily always picture things in my head completely when I'm reading. Mm-hmm. So to have the graphic novel makes it much easier for me personally yeah. to do that. Okay. Which scene has stuck with you the most? I had one thought, but now I'm like, no, really, it's another thought. <laughs> I um, agree. <laughs> so, uh, so I think one of the scenes that stuck with me the most was when Maya was talking to their aunt, who was the lesbian, mm, and they yes. were. That was a good one. Uh, and excuse me, M was not them, right? They. A. When we say not they, so A Is it was E Y E E M Air Air. Okay. Okay, when Maya air. was talking to Air Ant. Thank okay. You. Thank you. See, it's about learning, right? Mm-hmm. So, um, so when Maya was talking to Air Ant, and the aunt who is, uh, you know, open lesbian for all of Maya's life, and how the aunt was so questioning, like, well, what do you mean? And, and I thought, well, that's not good. But it does happen. I feel like as an older generation, mm-hmm. oh, yeah. it's like, Oh, wait, like I have a friend who's a gay man and when my child is like, oh, I'm going to use the pronouns they, them, he's like, well, I don't get this. I don't understand it. Mm -hmm. So it takes time to learn it. Mm -hmm. And you also have to respect that the person who's going through anything is the one that knows the best, right? Like, I think that, um, so that's something that really, that scene struck me that like, wow, this was an aunt who was supportive and also probably... I would think when they came out as a lesbian might have went through some challenges Mm -hmm. was still challenging but Maya was good about taking the time to answer the questions yeah oh yeah he said until like 1 Mm a.m. so right yeah so So, yeah I mean that was definitely one I had written something else down too but as we're talking I'm remembering other scenes and I think Mm -hmm. another one for me was when Maya was picking out air Halloween costume Mm -hmm. yes because like trying to figure out what fit best for E M for M, M. <laughs> what fit best for M and all that whole scene. It was just so great, and then to see M so happy when they finally uh, A finally figured it out. When E finally, oh my god, it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> to see M so happy when E finally figured it out. We should probably give a little thing that E M and Air are the spivic pronouns. Spivic pronouns. Spivic. Mm. Spivic. To people that are like, why do they keep saying this? So it's just a little more. Specific? Yeah, specific, specific or, or but also um, they're called Spivec because that's the space in which these pronouns originated from. I actually did some research after the oh. first time I read Ooh. this book. Mm-hmm. So Spivec was, if I'm remembering correctly, like an online forum in the 90s. Okay. And I, I 
feel like it was tied to like a role play group or something similar to that or like it was like a forum group but it included pronoun options that went beyond just he and she and i think maybe even they and had things like em ear or i think like vivim ver v-e-r mm, was also that, a very big popular one there are others, and I'm completely blanking That's on them. Okay. Oh, and yes, yeah. it, it said it was used in a book by American mathematician yes. Michael Spivak. Yes. Oh, oh, interesting. And then were adapted for online use because oh, that's sort of where they came to popularity. Hmm. Okay. Did you, Courtney, did you say your... Your favorite scene, um, sorry. You, yeah, we <laughs> got off track. That's okay. As we do. Uh, I did not, but I marked down a couple of pages. Mm. So the first one was... Maya's high school coming out journey and the timeline that E sort of put together. Oh, yes. Mm -hmm. Which got me to reflect on my own instances of gender and sexuality exploration and also confusion in my youth that I really came away with this just thinking about my own life and it felt really cool to see something like this just put to visual and like even just, you know, laid out in this beautiful sort of winding line with these clouds of gender confusion in the background and pinpointing specific experiences. And I think also to that end, pages 120 to 121, when Maya is talking about the metaphor for air gender being a scale where being assigned female at birth is permanently weighing down the one side and then E adds other things to the other side to sort of balance it out. Again, not necessarily with the intention of completely transitioning them themselves to another gender, but to sort of balance out the feminine traits with neutrality. It just completely flipped the script for how I was looking at gender up to that point and felt really resonant. I also really loved you know, as you were talking about when E was shopping for their Halloween costume, mm -hmm. towards the end, when E was starting to sort of cultivate their own sense of style and sense of self and coming into their mm -hmm. own. That was great, too. Really, really loved that. Yeah. Yeah. So who do you think the audience Maya had most in mind when writing this book? My initial thought is probably like older teens and adults struggling with figuring themselves out. Mm -hmm. But I mean, probably anybody, really. I said, regardless, or maybe in spite of it being an adult book, despite it being an adult book, anyone who's ever felt uncertain in their mm -hmm. body about how one is perceived by society or by the people around them, or anybody who needs to know that they're not alone in their journey. Yeah. Yeah, I thought people going through similar situations, but then I was like, anyone who wants to learn, you it, know, I it, think, yes. I think that's the Absolutely. whole thing about books. It's supposed to... You know, there's that quote that books should be a mirror and a window and a door, you know, mm -hmm. like it should be so many things for people. Um, you should be able to see yourself or experience someone else's journey through a book. <laughs> Whatever you feel <laughs> makes it sounds better. I don't know, like it makes sense. I'm just thinking yeah. together. I don't know. Yeah. Okay. No, anyway. no. Yeah, but you just asked the question. Next was, question yeah. then. <laughs> <laughs> what is Maya's experience with pronouns? So it is an uncommon set of pronouns. I almost called it a third option. That's not necessarily what it is. Yeah. But it's just not one that people are used to necessarily seeing in a wider public context, I think, or maybe outside of the LGBTQ space. Yeah. The big takeaway that I got from it was that using the Spivak pronouns is something that Maya finds real ownership in and it sort of feels like the last piece of the puzzle almost at least the way that the narrative shows in how E is sort of discovering themselves and setting a baseline for who they are and how E feels comfortable showing themselves to the world. Yeah I thought um, the section with the pronouns when they spoke to a was it a cousin or a good friend a good yes. friend right yes That's and yes find. when i felt like oh when they found these pronouns e m air they were like he was like 
this is amazing, you know? Like, yeah. And it was beautifully drawn. I do think this is where the graphic novel, like, looking at their friend and just coming to realize that, like, oh, this is an option, you know? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So. Yeah, for those not seeing us, uh, it's on page 189, if you have the book to reference, mm -hmm. where, yes. you know, their friend talks about the pronouns that A uses, and then air face just lights up, and there's actual stars in, yeah. in the eyes. <laughs> it's really beautiful. But they also do have, like, the next page after is like, oh, how do I say this? Yes. How do I ask yes. people? And, and that's something that people that have different pronouns shouldn't be so challenging, you know? Yeah. They should be able to ask, and it should be done. And, uh, yeah. and uh, obviously, people should have grace and... And, uh, you know, people are going to make mistakes, but right. as long as just try. you keep trying. Mm -hmm. right? Yeah, I mean, we covered my answer, but just yeah. taking time to figure out which pronouns were best in research mm -hmm. was how right. Maya figured it out. Yeah. So this book was the most banned book in the U.S. in 2023 and has drawn a lot of rebuke from people who cite its sexually explicit nature and illustrations. What are your thoughts on this? <laughs> So obviously there was part of me that wanted to read it because it was the most banned book. Because yeah. it makes yes. me like, okay, yes. why? Why? Yep. You know, I think that in the context of the book, what we were seeing was meant to be there. You know, like I, yes. I felt like it was 100%. It was not anything more, and it was probably much less than many erotic novels I've yeah. read. You know, like, <laughs> oh, yeah. uh -huh. like when you think of like a Fifty Shades of Grey or something <laughs> yeah. like that, I was like... So um, that's my thoughts on it. Yeah. I think that... I mean, it was, I, I don't know, two, three pages. Uh -huh. <laughs> right. um, but yeah, I... Sorry, did I cut you off? No, no, it's okay. we're having a conversation. No, um, yeah, so just, you know, like, it, ultimately, though, it's written technically for adults. Mm -hmm. It's cataloged for yeah. adults. Mm -hmm. It's, it's appropriate. Like, right. I don't... Yeah. Right. Yeah. Again, I liken this to Fun Home because, mm. as I remember, Fun Home also had scenes similar to this. Mm. It's even referenced in the book yeah. yes. Yes. at one yep. point, which is funny because that's not a scene that I remembered from Fun Home. <laughs> but I was thinking very specifically about when Allison is in college and is with her first girlfriend, and it shows them being intimate for the first time and how that journey sort of takes itself. It's a very present theme. And again, the fact that it was referenced in here alone, yeah. but also the similarity. I think conservatives love to look at something like this on a surface level, a graphic novel for adults on a surface level, and immediately point fingers because they're conflating the idea of a comic as a kid's book. Mm. This is completely yeah. ahistoric just completely and factually ahistoric. The reality is that not only is it wrong, but adults are allowed to talk about sexually explicit ideas and exploration, and there's very clearly, as you guys said, a means to an end as to why Maya shows it in here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's just another facet of the way E is showing air exploration into air life and gender and figuring themselves out for the better. I think even the the part when I go back to the original Pap smear thing, it's like, oh the horror and then E went to have a, another one, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And um I think it's important even to show that that basic thing that females need to do for their health that the doctor was able to be like, oh wait we, we have options. This. We could do yeah. this and make it better. So to show those scenes, it's important for females to sign up birth all over the world. Oh, you yeah. Know? Absolutely. Like, yes, the exam is important. But yes, yeah. sometimes finding a second opinion is important right. to be more comfortable with. Yeah. yeah. Okay, number 10. <laughs> have you or would you want to read another book by this author? I have not, but I definitely am open to it. I don't even think I know what else... He has written, but I'm going to look into it. Yeah, same. I would 100%. This was a delight. I know, and you have it with you, he oh, worked nice. on Breathe, Journeys mm -hmm. to Healthy Binding, which has also been recommended to me, and I'm very excited to check out. I think this is E's second mainstream publication, if mm -hmm. I'm remembering correctly. Hmm. Although I do have to wonder if E has like a record of air reading logs somewhere, because I would love to read that, oh, yeah. actually. Yeah. I think that would be really cool. Maybe like, if E has a website or something. Probably. Maybe yeah. on like extras. 
<laughs> yeah. That would be neat. I read Breathe this morning, very briefly, because... Mm-hmm. Um, and I want to get it back into the library yeah. so that people can borrow it. This right. is brand new, right? Yeah. Uh, this is this came out in May. It came so out in yes. May, yeah. Okay. Um, you know, Breathe, Journeys to Healthy Binding, that Maya wrote also with a doctor, Sarah Peitzmeier, his PhD. And when you read the book, you see, like, I believe it was a research project that was done. In 2015, they spoke to a certain amount of people that were binding for whatever reason. Okay, interview 25 people who bind about their binding journeys and ask the same people to do 90 days of surveys about their lives related to binding. I didn't know much about binding before. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I mean, before gender queer, I right. didn't even know like things can hurt you. Oh, like yes. I didn't know that at all. Yes. Yeah. So this was very informative. Again, like I'd rather read a more like light book, but right. this was so short that mm-hmm. it wasn't. Um, it didn't feel. No, like, it didn't feel yeah. daunting. And at the end, there are like some journal prompts. Oh, that's and there's some yeah, like cool. interactive like pieces, which I mean, who doesn't love that? You know, yeah, so that. that was really good. Oh, that's great, especially for a YA book. Yeah, yeah. that's beautiful. Yeah, yeah, YA nonfiction. So the other thing is, oh, in 2025, um, Maya's next graphic novel will be coming out from Scholastic. Oh, neat. Maya teamed up with artist Lucky Sri Kumar. It's a middle grade graphic novel ooh, being ooh. released through Scholastic's graphics imprint. So I think it's called Sachi Stories. So that we can all look forward to next yeah. year. It's aimed for a younger audience, but it is still about a character wrestling with their gender, identity, and sexuality. I, so, that's I love that. I yes. love that. Yeah. So that's, you know, we'll put on our TV mm-hmm. red. Absolutely. So, yeah. yeah. I love that we're getting more representation for that um, within the middle grade space. Oh, yeah. This is just another beautiful contribution. Yeah. yeah for sure. All right. Well, so now I'm just going to jump into the five quick thoughts. Go for quick, it. Sure. Okay, so five quick go thoughts we do. We didn't do it for our book cafe, but we do it at the end of all of our books. So would you recommend this book to someone on the street? I think it depends on the person on the street, but mm-hmm. absolutely, if I thought it was in their wheelhouse. I said it depends on the street. <laughs> <laughs> I said if it, if it was like a flea market or like a book fair or oh, something. Oh, yeah, that's like, true, Like, absolutely. Yeah. Or, you know, a pride festival. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Absolutely, I would. Yeah. I think every book has an audience, you know, so. Absolutely. Uh, oh, yeah. So I always am like, yes, I would recommend it. Depends on the person. Yeah. If you could give this book a different title, what would it be? This question was hard for me. Uh-huh. <laughs> I said maybe something like discovering who I am, but mm. then that sounds a lot less catchy than genderqueer. So. Yeah. <laughs> um, I said... Either E and ear in re- reference to Maya's pronouns. Oh, I think that's a really like that interesting better. way to lead with it. Or something with snakes, because I know mm. they esta- established oh, yeah. that right. he really loves snakes, and mm. even kind of towards the end described air experiences with binding, just like shedding, sh- skin. shedding yes. skin. Yes. Yeah, so yeah. something with snakes I think would be really cool. Yeah. Again, gender queer is a great title, but I was like maybe like making peace with myself. Oh, but mm-hmm. but then I was like I don't know, you know. I think he had the right idea. Yeah. yeah. Um, what emotions did you feel when reading this book? I felt a lot of emotions. <laughs> um, for example, I felt happy when Maya was figuring out who he was and pronouns and all of that, and sad when he was confused. Just you know the yeah. general yeah. joy validation, Mm -hmm. intrigue, nostalgia, empathy, and funny enough, a little bit of envy, but mostly comfort. I think comfort was a big theme for me when reading this. Comfort in terms of seeing things that I was familiar with, but also comfort in terms of seeing this other person's experiences, and again, kind of not feeling alone in that. Mm -hmm. There was a large part of me that was sadness for Maya, not because of the end where where he really is figuring out things, but through it that the binding part, I did not know that like it could be so yeah, you know yeah. injuring. But I think also it made me feel sad for Maya and people that have similar situations. But then I'm hopeful that this book is out there for oh, people yeah. to learn from. So yeah. yeah. Number four, what format did you consume this book? I read it in print. Mm -hmm. I think that if I did it digitally, it probably would have been roughly the same experience. Mm -hmm. I don't know if for this one there's an audio component. I know that some graphic novels do have that now, and I have been very curious to see what that's like, but I haven't haven't done it yet. (laughs) 
I also read this as print. I also agree, I think if I read this as digital, it probably wouldn't have changed much. I've read a couple of graphic novels as digital yeah. before, and mm -hmm. the experience is by and large very the same. Mm -hmm. It's hard for me to imagine reading a graphic novel as an audiobook, same. but with this specific mm -hmm. book, I can absolutely imagine listening to it and hearing parts that would warrant me needing to like stop and reflect upon them mm. like it probably would have mm. taken me much longer just to like process what i was sense. reading in a way that's not easy for me to like put a bookmark in it and stop and think and yeah back to it i took it out in print and digital because okay. we didn't have it at my branch in print so i wanted to like that's because i've been hoarding it <laughs> <laughs> Well, mine then came from Lacey. Ah, so, you know, mine we do is ours. Have, okay, we do have a bunch. <laughs> so I had the digital and I had the print and I'm glad I did get the print because I like feeling a book. Even though yeah. most of my things are audio, obviously this one, like you said, there are some graphic novels that they create into audio. I don't believe this one is there and I think it would probably, you'd miss some of the real yeah, yeah. emotions doing it that way. But I did have to make sure I carved out time for myself yes. to really read it, not yeah. then like putting it on and just listening. Not that it took long, maybe an hour and a half, uh -huh, you know, right. like graphic yeah. novels like this. Yeah. So, um, no, both times I read this, I was able to do it in a day, but you know, yeah. it's definitely one where you kind of have to go back and take another look at things. Yeah. If something is really pulling at you. Yeah. I don't know how much this is present in the adult space this might be me being used to children's and how children's works but in the children's space we have a lot of those wonder books that are graphic oh, yes. novels yep that mm. are read it's the aloud. graphic novel but it reads along like with the audio as you read it and i could see this serving uh, this makes, format very mm -hmm. well that makes a little more sense sure, yeah maybe they'll eventually do adult ones maybe <laughs> that'd be yeah. nice I think they're supposed to. I think okay. I saw that at the public I mean, library convention. Oh, that, nice. Oh, that's exciting. Yeah. I know yeah. a lot of people, myself included, who would like really benefit yeah. from yeah, that. Yeah, for sure. So. If you could pick a theme song for this book, what would it be? I have so many songs oh. in my head that I can't ever remember all of them. Oh, so yeah. I went with my first thought. So I was like, we'll just go with this one. And I said Unwritten by Natasha Bedingfield. Oh, that's a good one. Nice. Like my yeah, high school nice. days. But nice. Yeah. Nice. Yeah, yeah. Going with the music that was discussed in this book, I said Changes by David Bowie. Oh, mm. nice. Oh, that mm. is a beautiful pages, too. I did think yeah. of that for like that's the great idea. Book. Yes. And then I went with one of the songs they spoke about, which was Born This Way by Lady Gaga. Oh, Hedda. yes. Yep, that's so, a good one. Too. But uh, yeah, so really great music. So that is our talk on gender queer. I would recommend it, and I agree. I would love to read all of the books. Like there's, I forgot about the pages of like all the books that yeah, uh -huh. Maya read. So um, yeah. Any last thoughts? Uh, not that I can think of. Nope. I think we covered it all. <laughs> all right. This was great. Yeah. Well, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Right. Thank you for joining us today. Be sure to visit the Ocean County Library's website for more podcasts and events. All the titles mentioned in today's episode can be found throughout the Ocean County Library, free with your library card. Until next time, happy reading.